Are you a network engineer? And do you want to move to cybersecurity? Well, you have all of the advantages in the world. Many people believe only Linux administrators and web application developers can easily move to cybersecurity career. No, network engineers also have the equal advantage. And this is what this video is all about. We'll talk about devices, tools, and cybersecurity certification path. For those who are new to this channel, welcome. I am your host, name is Dean Armada, and I'm the internet. Action Star. And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia and tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia and tutorials in cloud and data center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. As a network engineer, you have to maintain network devices. These are switches and routers, but by default, they are not really secured. You, as a network engineer, you can enable various security features and protocols. And from there, you can start learning security. So in switches, you can learn and activate these security features. We have BPDU slash root guard to protect from STP spoofing. We also have port security for max spoofing and cam flooding. We also have DHCP snooping for DHCP spoofing and starvation and many more. And for routers, you can also enable various security protection. First, we have the access control list or ACL for filtering, IP source guard for IP spoofing, and you can enable security for those running routing protocols, such as OSPF, BGP, EIGRP, and many more. And for both routers and switches, you can also enable device access security. This is where you administer your network devices. You activate security via management plane controls. You can also enable AAA features such as radius and TACAX. AAA, by the way, stands for authentication, authorization, and accounting. All right, um, here is the good part. At least in Cisco routers, the most advanced VPN features and capabilities are running in routers. Not firewalls, yes, in routers. We have FlexVPN, DMVPN, VTIs, remote access, etc. Understanding VPNs is another way to slowly shift from network guy to a network security practitioner. Now, you should not limit your skills to only routers and switches. There are many more appliances that are more advanced, especially in cybersecurity. And this will help you understand more security. Learning next generation firewall is probably another step to open doors to various security paths. Here's how good a next generation firewall solution is. It can do many things such as network application protection. It can also do VPN, IDS slash IPS, malware protection, and it can also detect which hosts are compromised. I would recommend you to start learning Cisco Firepower or Palo Alto Network Next Generation Firewalls. Understanding Identity Access Management Solution is also a good idea. This allows you to create policies that authorize which user, group of users, or devices authorized to access specific networks. Another device that I personally recommend is for you to learn application delivery controller or load balancer because it's a network server and application appliance. The best example is FI Big IP. And this device or this solution is designed for the inbound traffic. So what are you protecting are the servers and applications. This will also help you shift from a network engineer to network security engineer and to application security specialist. 
other application level security devices that you may also want to learn are web application firewalls such as Imperva or FI Big IP ASM, web gateway slash proxies such as Blue Code and Cisco WSA. We also have DNS and email security appliances as well. Now, you don't need to know all of these hacking and penetration testing tools. As a network engineer, these are the things that I recommend you to start learning. First, Wireshark, probably something that you're already using as a network engineer for layer 2, layer 3 network slash packet analysis. But this time, you will use it for security purposes. You will be able to identify threats and malicious network activities. Second is HPing. This is primarily for penetration testing, but this is also a packet crafting and packet manipulation tool. You can create many different types of network traffic, such as changing flags, splitting packets, and many more. For wireless, there are many tools used for packet capture. This can also be used for IDS and for cracking authentication and many others. Tools such as Aircrack NG Suite, Kismet, Wi-Fi, and many more. These are all available in Kali Linux. For network scanners, Nmap is the most commonly used command line vulnerability scanner. It's free and open source. It has a broad range of capabilities such as multiple scans mode to bypass firewalls and other security devices. It also supports fingerprinting and many more. You can also use commercial network scanners such as Nessus and Qualys. It's a graphical user interface and provides more features like automated scans, producing reports. You can also add plugins and scan from a variety of network perspective. All right. As a network engineer who is just starting to understand more of the offensive side of security, it's also a good idea for you to learn cyber kill chain model. It's a framework that provides different phases of attack process by which a threat actor will build a plan or strategy to affect a specific goal or end state against a specific target. In short, it's the blueprint of some or most hackers. All right, our goal is to know more about the defense and cybersecurity operations. And at this level, we're not planning to be an ethical hacker or a full-fledged penetration tester. Assuming you are already a CCNA and let's say you have zero knowledge in security technologies, the best certification to take is Security Plus. It's super basic and introduces attacks and vulnerabilities such as DDoS, social engineering, and many more. It also introduces security operations and controls, VPNs, what else, identity access management, and many others. Now, since you are a network engineer and you want to understand various ways to secure your network and applications as well, F5 Certified Big IP Administrator is another good option. Take note, the goal is to understand how to protect applications such as web and DNS and many more. But if you're not really interested in securing applications, you can actually skip this certification, F5CA. All right, next. Cisco Cyber Ops Associate. Now, this is a track by Cisco that is focused more on security operations. So they talk about threat incident, cyber kill chain model, identifying threats, identifying attack vectors, and malicious activities. And it's more of what to do in a security operation center environment. They also introduce SOC Playbook, CompTIA Pentest Plus, I would put this as an honorable mention because you don't really need to be good at penetration testing. This is an associate level certification anyway, and it's more of introduction to many different ethical hacking tools. All right, let's move to tier 2.5 or the professional slash mid level. First is Cisco certified network professional in security. This makes the most sense. Why? Because you are already CCNA. You are just moving to another level. So the CCNP security consists of two exams. We have the S-Core. This is the core exam and one more concentration. 
Well, check the link below to know more about the best CCNP exam combinations. Next is F5 Certification Specialist. Well, there are three, and these three are prerequisite for the expert level. But if you just want to focus on web application security, just take the F5 CTS in ASM. All right, next is Palo Alto Network Certified Security Engineer. Why? Because they are the leading next generation firewall solution, and many companies are using their product. And I believe there's only one popular certification, and this is PNCSE. Um, all right, one more. Don't limit your skills to Cisco only solution because cybersecurity is very broad. All right, now the fourth one, I still can't decide whether it's Cisco Cyber Ops Professional Certification or OSDA. OSDA stands for Offensive Security Defense Analyst or CompTIA CASP+. Here's the goal. It's always better to know and understand vendor solution first, then learn the actual operations, identifying threats, identifying uh, malware, investigate many malicious network activities, an incident response. Tier 3, the 5, the expert level. This is when you're rooting for tech lead, architect, managerial, or even executive level role. All right, first, CCIE Security. CCIE is still the best expert level certification out there. If you want to focus on many different security solutions and learn lots of money, I highly recommend you to take this. Next, F5 CSE Security or Certified Solution Expert. Again, if you want to focus on securing your cloud and data center environment, focusing on many different applications, specifically web technologies, take F5 CSE. All right, next and the last is ISC squared CISSP. It's for management, an architect, or even executive level certification. More on corporate cybersecurity process, planning, principles, and many more. Not too technical though, but the certification and credentials is really popular, widely recognized, and will definitely help you to advance your cybersecurity career. So that is the strategy on how to switch from a network engineer to cybersecurity professional. I didn't mention other vendors such as Juniper, Fortinet, Checkpoint, Splunk, etc. It's also useful and will help you shift to cybersecurity especially if these appliances are already existing in your network environment. They are not just the top players. Comment below if you have any questions. And don't forget to hit the like button.